Hi, welcome to the Stitch TV show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilting talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. Join us for twice monthly talk shows, virtual stitch ins, quilting book clubs, celebrity interviews, podcasts, probably even more than that. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Our show today is brought to you by QT Fabrics, and we have the ombre pop ups again by um, the quilt, the <laughs> Fat Quarter Gypsy. So I, I may have bought the kit to make more of these. <laughs> like, and there's a giant trash can size one that I think I could totally fit all three cats in. Oh, that would be like a goal. Like surprise But the thing cat. is, the cats are gonna try to fit into this one. Oh, totally. If it yeah. fits, they sit. But isn't this the one that you can put like water bottles yes, and coconuts in? Yes, from our virtual stitch-in. Yes. So I'm thinking I need to make some cozies because that's kind of cute. It is kind of cute. Cute cozies. Cute <laughs> So today we're going to be talking about picking alternate colorways, which is Pam's topic, and I'm not sure I know what that means, and what <laughs> makes a good quilt shop. We're also joined by Pam's wedding quilt. So, and I th I don't know why it's your wedding quilt, so you're going to uh, have to tell me. So uh, the butterfly blocks were made by my husband's grandmother. Oh, neat. Hand appliqued. There you go. And then my mother-in-law had all of these from muslin. Um, and she she had a whole bunch of these butterfly blocks. And I think she used some of them to make a quilt for one of my nieces. Uh, and then the rest she uh, sashed together. And she spent m months looking for the two perfect reds um, and sashed them up. And it's hand quilted. And she was short one block. Because your mother-in-law hand quilts. Oh, yeah. She hand quilts. And she was short one block, so what you can't see down in the, the bottom corner, there's like a ghost butterfly <laughs> where she just stitched the outline because she was short one block. But it's got some groovy 70s fabrics in it, man. Yes, it does. <laughs> groovy. Yes. And uh, she gave it to us uh, after our wedding. Which is very cool. That makes it precious. Mm -hmm. So does it have a label on it? I think it does. Good. <laughs> if it doesn't, I will like go it label should. it. It should have a label She's on it. She's good about labeling. Well, that's Which good. is why I got into quilting. Not because of her labeling prowess, but because she was a quilter. <laughs> because she was good at labeling. This is why we all join. <laughs> Pretty much. Are, I really wish label. I could label more things. <laughs> oh, I'll get into quilting. <laughs> I do have a custom label maker, but it's not for quilts. So it's the little Dymo. Like you plug it in and then it spits out the label. And you put it on stuff. And you label things like, this is my labeling drawer. <laughs> Someone may have done that in my house. Did you label the labeler? Because that's like the next you did. I labeled you it with my name. This is Pam. And then I, oh, and I used it for my son's. Like, we had to buy him this super expensive calculator, like a scientific calculator with the graphing and all that. And it was yeah. like 120 bucks for his math class last year. And I'm like, we're labeling this. <laughs> Put a label on that thing. <laughs> Very exciting. Anyway, labels. Labels. You should all do them. <laughs> Maybe not as much as I do. It's kind of a sickness. <laughs> I do have a labeler. So um, what so, else is up? Well, you and I took a class together, we which did. we don't always get to do, but we did take a class together, and it was Karen K. Buckley's two-day hand applique class. Very intense. It was like you would thought. Maybe you just learned some techniques the first day, and then you'd just be hand applique the rest nope. of the No. Not at all. Like you were doing, and I brought mine. I did not bring mine only because they're so tiny they would not show up on camera. <laughs> so, yes, but we have a new camera. But it's perfect to talk about alternate colorways. Well, yeah, it, it is. Because you went off the rails. So I did. Like the color <laughs> that they used, and I'll put this over here. The color, we have a new camera. So, like, Lord, get, get ready for some Get ready for some craziness right here. So, the. Um, the the thing what that we did is we learned how to make circles, perfect circles. We learned how to make leaves. We learned how to make stems. Um, so that was really cool. And then the other thing that we learned, let me move this up a little, is we learned how to do um, reverse, applique. reverse applique, which is really also a neat technique. So you you made the heart, and then you cut out the top, and backed it with the other. It was really cool. It was cool yeah. how we did it. Very intense class. Lots of techniques. Um, 
I, I a lot of prep work, which a is lot of why it can work. be slow going if you like stitch down all your pieces and you're like, oh, yeah. well now I'm out of things and you have so to. So you need you definitely need a box to if you're gonna take this carry on. You want a box where you can prep because you're gonna need an iron and um, a certain kind of template that doesn't melt. Yeah. To prep all of your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> which is officially called Templar, which Lynn and I can't hear without thinking of, you know, yeah, the Knights of the Templar. Templar. <laughs> and I don't think that there are uh, bejacketed men running around I'd yelling me, no. <laughs> waving this plastic. Me. Yeah, so we got into the whole spam a lot thing. or um, We, the, t the two of us in the back of the class. They, I don't think a lot of people in the class totally got our jokes. That's fine. Which, we live in our own little world. Although, we world. did... We were getting set up because we were super early birds because I drove. <laughs> we were there like an we hour early. We were there an hour early. Uh, Seriously, an hour early. An hour. Yes. Well, I thought we were stopping for refreshments. We yeah. Me too. We were both well prepared. Anyway, so we were setting up and someone came in and they turn around and they're like, <gasps> I watch your show. We're like, thanks. Be cool. Be cool. Don't act weird, Pam. We got to be cool. I'm always acting weird. That's on brand. Most, I loved the class. It was a great oh, yeah. class. Karen was a fabulous teacher. If you get a chance, take her class. But what I didn't like about the class, it was free space, but we had never been in there before. Oh, yeah. It was super tight. Like, so you were sewing, like, like right next year. That, that was a little difficult. Yeah. Like, not the best... Well, but I mean, what they did to be able to get us oh, this yeah. room, I mean, Amazing. thanks to everybody for all and that. And everyone had an iron, which is unusual when it's a free space. It's not usually plumbed up <laughs> for right. that kind of wattage. Right. So, but it was definitely, <laughs> definitely fun. Anyway, but I took another class from her. I didn't just take hand applique, I took um, machine applique. So this is machine applique, which this may drive the camera crazy. But this is the same. We we still learned how to do leaves and stems and stuff. And the same technique that we used to make the leaves and stems, we did for hand and machine. So that didn't change. But the machine applique was using invisible thread. So it's definitely, and I thought it turned out really well um, for hiding your stitches. So I'm going to be doing this more. The other key with this is you uh, back it. So you have a, a Solvi stable, uh, sulky, sulky stabilizer that you back it with, um, which helps the machine lay flat and you don't get the tunneling or the yeah, gathering, the gathering or the weird the, puckers. Yeah. So. Cool. So it was a great weekend. I feel like I'm smarter. I like being smarter than I was the weekend before. So, but then, you know, you can ruin that by watching some bad TV, but. What what did you watch? I, I'm, yeah. I haven't yet. Now I'm intrigued. Oh, no, yes. I haven't oh, yet. challenge accepted. I'm, I'm just saying, there are some TV shows I watch and go, I have lost brain cells. <laughs> Doesn't happen as much now because I Netflix and choose wisely. We watched Red Sparrow last night. That was kind of is creepy and yucky torture scenes. Okay. Like I watched half of it behind a quilt. I watched Great British Bake Off. It was nice people and carbs. There you go. <laughs> That's just <laughs> as scary. Palette carbs cleanser. are just as scary. It They're, was pie week. There was some, <gasps> some bad, some bad. I hate, I hate to say this. I love, <laughs> I love pie. Like I really do. There are only two kinds of pie that I like. There was a wide range of pies. Yeah, but I only like two kinds, hot and cold. Those are the two kinds that I like. They had some tepid ones, so you would not have been a fan. Oh, no, I love pie. Anyway, I'll do anyway, colorways. So we're supposed to talk about quilting, I think. Carbs, quilts, <laughs> it's all the same. Same thing. The so, quilts cover up the carbs, just saying. So... Alternate colorways came right. about. Well, it was yes. a viewer suggestion. It um, was. And our Karen K. Buckley projects are a perfect example. Because in Karen's, like her actual pattern, it's a black background. And it's very vivid, you know, tonal or tone-on-tone -tone fabrics for all the, the elements that you're appliquing on. So they read as solids. And what Lynn went with was like, pattern, 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 pattern. Also, some more patterns. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think, and and you know everything was symmetrical, and I like did my 
I think your flowers look down. My flower looks weird. Mine's centered. Like, yeah, looks better. In my brain, it looks better. So, yeah. alternate colorways. So, what do you think about when you say, because you put this on here, and I was like, I wonder what she means by that. Well, it, it always comes about annually for me when Bonnie Hunter, Hunter does her mystery, and she's like, oh, here's right. the colors. And sometimes it's colors were inspired by one of the trips she's taken. So, um, you know. Yes. And I always, cha I usually change at least one of those colors. So, last year's mystery was on Ringo Lake. It, like, here is a picture that she took when, on Ringo Lake, and, you know, a boat and a sunset. And, and so, the colors are very much inspired by that. And there was, like, a pink and a blue and a green and things you wouldn't necessarily think were like, oh, that doesn't sound like a lake. That sounds like crayon box. <laughs> And when I did mine, I was like, well, I'm going to change it up. And so I, instead of neutral, which are usually whites and creams that she specifies, I went with soft grays for my background. Right. Okay. And then I did a softer yellow compared to her brighter right. yellow. Golden yellow. And then I used a sage green instead of her brighter green. And then instead of pink, I think I used like a soft blue. And so my palette was a lot more muted, and it didn't have as much contrast, but that was a conscious choice. Um, and what Well, that's the risk in mysteries, though. Oh, yeah. That's totally the risk, because you don't know, when they say pick these colors, you don't know what they're, yeah. what, How what's going to be together. predominant. What's going to be next to each what's other. What's going to be, yeah. I mean, that's a risk when you do mysteries. But I think one of the most impactful ways to change a colorway from a pattern you know, because a lot, a lot of times people buy kits because it takes some of that fear out of like, ooh, I oh, hope I don't mess it up. Oh, I think that's a great idea. But you could swap out one fabric in the kit, jazz it up. So making an immediate change from a light background to a dark background. Oh, is, changes it completely. Yeah, like imagine the butterflies on black. It would look or totally navy. different. Yeah, it would look totally different. Yeah. So it, it's more about that design choice a conscious design choice, not an accidental design choice that you sometimes say is a design choice to cover up a mistake. <laughs> right. <laughs> so knowing like, oh, the quilt pattern calls for red, but I'm going to go with pink or I'm going to totally swap it up and opposite of red is green. Green. Put green in it. Instead. I thought she was. It was a quiz, <laughs> but I knew she knew the answer. I'm like, uh, green. Dur. Well, That's when red you, backwards. <laughs> when you uh, put this on... Now, just so everybody knows, and I think we said this before, I we don't talk about our topics together until we film. So I don't always know what she's thinking if she puts on a... Yeah, but we've had that happen the inverse, too, yes. where you put something down like, I don't know what this uh, she is. She didn't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so when I, you put alternate colorways, I was thinking in my head, okay, why would I do an alternate colorway? Because I think every quilt I do is an alternate colorway. Because I don't go by a mm -hmm. pattern anymore. Rarely do I make a pattern, and I'm always putting together my color choices. So I kind of approached it with, all right, well, you're going for a certain style. And what does that style say? So, like, I was thinking, all right, well, if you wanted to do an 1800s reproduction kind of quilt, you would use, like, these shirtings. And then you would probably use, like, 1800s, um, you know, pinks that go with the shirties and this would give you a certain style of quilt right and here's what i've learned about myself i don't have a lot of 1800s reproduction stuff like i was going to pull other colors of 1800s i got pink that's it <laughs> i didn't find a lot of other stuff and then if that style you know and then there are other styles in quilts and these would be like um like a 30s I also learned this about myself, is that a 30s quilt is going to have a certain um, look to them, right? And I don't have a lot of 30s prints kind of thing. So, but those are a certain style of fabric. So I was thinking a certain style yeah. of, you know, that kind of thing. And then I thought, well, what, what were you going to say? I was going to say, it's like when you are shopping real estate whether you're going to rent an apartment or buy a house or whatever you're doing you walk in the house and it's decorated as is and it, going making the conscious design choice to be like I see the basics I see the structure of this I see how rooms are supposed to work together uh, but I hate how all 
these walls are painted. <laughs> and being able to say like, oh, it would totally look better in my head if this were gray and this were blue. And, and, right. and it's the same kind of thing of having the imagination to pick something different. Right. Or having um, the bravery to just do it, even if you're not sure how it's going to turn out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will tell you, a lot of my cool choices, fabric colors are, I don't know how this is going to turn out. Let's see what happens. Now, that's a risk some people aren't willing to take. And I get that. My next thought was, okay, well, styles of quilts are, are very much determined by history or things that were previously done, right? So then I thought, well, alternate colors could be, what do I want this to feel like? Do I want it to feel, you know, bold and bright? Do I want it to be like the bright kind of colors? Or am I feeling the same quilt only muted? So you can see where these are the purple, green, and pink. And it's like bright and going out there and getting it. And then these are the muted versions of purple, green, and pink. And to me, they give a very different feeling mm -hmm. of that what that quilt's going to be. Now, would you put both of those in the same quilt? Well, yeah, but I have no shame. There's that. <laughs> but see, I would do it, but not necessarily mix them up, but have it so the brighter would be at one part of the quilt and it would kind of oh, transition that would be cool. into the we more muted. We should do that. That would be cool. And then like end up with a very soft pastel version of it. Right. Just that would be cool. But that this is also bold contrast and low contrast. Like this doesn't have as strong a contrast mm -hmm. in these three as this. And it's really just the you know, the, the choice of the fabrics and the bold coloredness. And then I was thinking... Oh, geez. Like, <laughs> like I totally... I know, you should just take a drink, because, like... Then I was thinking, well, what if we had the same... You know, a lot of uh, fabric designers make the same fabric in different colorways. Mm -hmm. You know, like Tula Pink, for example. <laughs> we all love Tula Pink. So she did, she did this... I think it's Eden... This was Eden? I think it is, yeah. Right? So she did this tiger print, and it's pixelated dot tiger, which I love. And I bought it in the red colorway. And I thought, well, if I pulled fabrics that go with that, what would I pull? And these would be, like, fabric choices that would go with that red type of colorway. So you're pulling out the teal. You're pulling out some yellow. You're pulling out the pink. Now, notice these were, like... Um, not a strong uh, pattern, which I know we're not talking about pattern, but not a strong pattern difference, but I think it complements that mm -hmm. well, right? And then if you, but but let's say you hate the red colorway of Tula Pink, she also did a blue colorway of the tiger, right? I don't have as much of that. I'm shocked that you did not invest as much in the cool colorway. I have like three yards of the other, I got a fat quarter. <laughs> Of the blue colorway. Pretty standard. <laughs> We're not shocked here. So, but this would be giving me a very different look if I went with the greens to do that. And then I thought it would be cool to pull in some blues for that too. Right? So it's a very different look, but I'm using the same fabric, mm -hmm. just different colorways that are yeah. governed by the fabric designer. Mm -hmm. So you can get alternate colorways, I think, outside of, you know. But I like how you were talking about Bonnie Hunter used a picture. Mm -hmm. And to me, that dr is driven by feelings. Like, this picture gives me this feeling. So your beach scene or lake, was it a lake? It's a lake, yeah. So your lake scene was, like, more muted than... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was... I Bonnie it was went on a sunny day. She, well... And you went on a less sunny day. Well, a mine was kind day. of a cloudy, it was a overcast. Day. It was yesterday. Here. Early spring. <laughs> Maybe it was April 25th, the perfect day. <laughs> it's not too hot. It's not too, too cold. cold. All you need is a light jacket. jacket. <laughs> That's a miscongeniality reference if you all are confused. <laughs> That's hilarious. We should do a quilt called The Perfect Day. We're just going to call it April, April 25th. 25th. Perfect day. <laughs> I love that movie. That was a great movie. It's a good movie. So that's what I was thinking when you were talking alternate mm -hmm. colorways. Yeah, I think it's open to interpretation, as most things we talk about are. <laughs> it's everything we talk about is open to interpretation. Pretty much. Yeah, I get it. So yeah, it's it's more about being feeling empowered to make a different choice, right. which lots of times. 
even experienced quilters sometimes are like, ooh, I don't want to mess it up because fabric is expensive. Right, yeah. And I think there's tools that can help you with alternate colorways and making those different choices. You know, it can be labor intensive to re go into EQA and like play with some of the colors and see how the Step shapes out of your work. box. Step out of your box. Right. Um, but I even, like my box. It's very comfortable. My Mine's rot. big. I, Lots of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Narrow. Um, but even just having the fabrics together and putting them on a design wall, leaving the room. Yes. Leave sleeping. the room. Sleep. Go to sleep. Oh, even just go get yourself a glass of water or something. Yeah. Come back in. What's your first impression of what that looks like on the color wall? Like, oop, surprise yourself. So what does it look like? Take a picture. Yep. Take a picture of it. Get Because I think if you take a picture of it, it gets you yeah, further away from the scale, it. Yeah, changing the scale. And you're helps. changing the scale of it. That helps. I think for me, I you know, this little exercise of this morning going through my fabric stash to just kind of pull ideas of what we were going to talk about. I learned two things about myself. One, I don't collect 30s fabric. I don't have any. I have red 30s fabric in my stash and that's it. And it's a big genre of fabrics out there and I just don't have any. I'm like, wow. I didn't realize that about myself, but I'm not attracted to them. So I don't gravitate to buy them. And the ones that I do have, 30s fabrics, are, are small, you know, mm -hmm. like small fat quarters. And I'm sure I was just looking for another red. And that went with that red or whatever. But I don't have a lot of 30s fabrics. The other thing I learned is I don't have a ton of 1800s reproduction stuff because I'm not, I didn't dig through my whole like fat quarter stash to look for that, but because I knew where the pinks were, so I just pulled them out really quick. I probably have a few more of those, but not many. I just don't collect those two genres of fabric very often. Yeah, I don't either. So that was kind of hard. That was interesting, but the batiks were easy to pull. Of course, Tula Pink was very easy to pull. That was not a. That was not hard at all. So. <laughs> All right, now we're going to take a closer look at the quilt behind us, and we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Hi, welcome back. We are going to talk now about, we were giggling in the break, sorry. Um, not surprised there. But what we're going to talk about now is what makes a good quilt shop? Fabric. <laughs> I mean, is, that's why you go in there. Yeah. That was number one on mine, too, yeah. is fabric. Like fabric, a variety. That's what we want. But. But. Is good it? fabric. I like good fabric. Well, you like a fabric you like. Mm -hmm. What if it only has 1800s fabric? Then we would or be 30s walking reproduction out fabric. Quickly. Apparently, I would be walking out quickly and not buying a lot. I, you know, I, there is a fabric store in an area that I go to yearly that has a lot of 1800s reproduction stuff. And then there's a modern fabric store in the same town. The modern one gets most of my money. The 18, I've bought a few things from there, but not very much. Yeah. But it's and not it's, my jam. It's other people's jam, and they should totally go shop there because there are a lot of great fabrics. It's all about the journey. So you go in the store and you look around. My mug's been backwards this whole time. And then you go, <laughs> I don't need stick. anything. And you leave. <laughs> so, but fabric is important to have a good quilt store. I think quilt store, quilt store, quilt store, you need fabric. <laughs> yes. So, anything else? Uh, I think helpful, but not overly helpful employees. <laughs> That's my second one, too, is helpful people. But I agree. Don't follow me around. Yeah. And don't question that I don't know what I'm doing. <sighs> yes. This happened to me. I think, at a shop I think, that you love younger, I think younger looking quilters, non Non-traditional looking quilters. People that are under age 55. Yes. Even if you have colored hair or piercings or tattoos or just it. Whatever. Sometimes I, you're looked at like you don't know what you're doing. I was 38. <laughs> I had been sewing for 35 years and I went into a quilt shop 
and picked out a pattern and the woman looked at me and said, oh honey, this one's hard. <laughs> and I can't say on camera what, what went through my head, head, but it was like, no, 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 she won't say. <laughs> Beep, you don't know my life. <laughs> uh, and I was like, yeah, I think I'll be okay. <laughs> But that makes you not want to shop there again. It does not. And I yes. rarely did. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So patronizing employees, not good. Not good. Try to Any be helpful, helpful of like, oh, have you seen this? Have you tried this technique? This has a lot of half square triangles, flying geese, whatever. Are you right. familiar? You know. Right. And, and there is a fine line between salesy and helpful. Right. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. And I would agree, most quilt shops fall on the helpful. Oh, yeah, 90, I, 80% of It is ones. rare that I have been in one where they're overly salesy. But where, but when it's they more just assume you don't know. Yeah, that part is. Because of how you look, I that's kind of. Yeah, because yeah. I didn't have enough gray hair yet or whatever. Yeah, or because I covered mine up well. Yeah, that part was not great. Um, yeah, I, I agree with and you. And we have heard that. Multiple times oh. about different. Oh, yes. Yeah. I think living in an area where there's multiple quilt stores, you do hear that a little yeah. bit. <laughs> the gossip network's alive and well. In the quilts. Yeah, in the quilters. Yeah. Um, I love it when there is an area that I can put my stack of stuff and still keep shopping. So like a whole table or like, oh, I'm just put this on the cutting table for you. So come back when you're ready. Oh, so right. So you don't have to carry around like bolts of fabric and yeah, knock into exactly. people. and. We've got, there's one quilt store here that has little carts, I know. <laughs> shopping carts, and you can just put your bolts in there. And it's not a big box store. It's not. They have those too, but it's not a big box store. But I agree with you that it's helpful because if I'm doing a big quilt and I want half yards from 15 different bolts, that's like, honestly, I've got a shipment coming today of fabric for a new quilt. That I have one coming on, this week. I know that I'm I spent online. some birthday money <laughs> that I gifted myself. No one gave me birthday money. I <laughs> spent just money, really. Money, money. Yeah. Money, money. Um, you know what else I think I like about quilt stores is some samples. Like I like seeing samples of these or bags or not just quilts. Mm -hmm. Like I love the quilts on the wall, and I and I will say. If you've got a quilt on a wall, I kind of look at it and go, ooh, I like that fabric. or Because you see the fabric in what you want to put it in. I'm not one that buys kits as much as I used to. I did when I first started. I thought kits were great because you didn't have to. You learned techniques. You learned. I buy the kits for the parts. Yeah. Now <laughs> I buy, now I buy kits if, you know, I just want some, like, easy sewing that I, I'm not designing because there's a whole different level of designing that, yeah. you know, takes time. But uh, I love it when the kits are up and that they have things bundled or kitted up. Or I like that. Well, I like it too when there is, here are bundles we have put together, which yes. is always more inspiring. Now, and the shop in particular near us that does that has always been very good about like, well, if you like four of the five fabrics in the bundle, we could swap one out for you. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, thanks. I don't like that one. <laughs> yeah. So I've done that. But I love, like, but sometimes when they put bundles together and you don't like this fabric, you need that fabric. Seriously. Because it takes you out of a box that you're not used to being in. Cause that's like when people, you know, I used to hate pink, so I made a pink quilt. I don't know that I still love pink, but I'm more, I'm, I'm nicer to it. I don't hate it. It has place at the party. I just dislike it a little bit, not as much. So, um, and it's probably because I like red so much. I really love red. Red's like one of my favorite colors. Red, orange, <laughs> like those those colors. Samples. I like samples. I like cute displays. I'm all about the cuteness of the shop. Like, I want to go in there more as long as it's cute. They've got cute stuff. How often should they change out their cute stuff? Oh, that's why I never want to be a shop owner. Because, <laughs> oh, my gosh, that to me is the toughest part about shopping. I mean, if you were a shop owner, is... Keeping it fresh. Keeping it fresh, keeping the samples fresh, that kind of stuff. Um, I like it 
um, when they have the new whatever. Like right now, I think those Jolly Roll rugs are trendy. Mm -hmm. So like if you're going in and seeing the rug made, oh my gosh, that looks cool. Because I've seen them online enough now that I'm like, I want to see one live and in person. Did you get your son? No, not yet. Okay. I'm I still cutting batting strips. I know. I got to cut I got to cut my batting strips. Because I got plenty of batting strips. I know I could buy the pre-cut, but like I got enough batting <laughs> just from trimming quilts. Uh, I, I saw where you could buy the pre-cut and I was like, that will be so much easier. And then I thought, no, I so need to use what yeah. I've got. I've got, uh, just don't even look. I, I can see it from here. Yeah, it's kind of sad. Girl. Anyway, <laughs> I think long arms give you more batting because you, I don't know, maybe not. They don't magically produce batting. I think it does. Point Seriously. of order. It does not. I think it does. It. Why is that cabinet full then? I don't know. All right. So what else do you look When you talked now? about seeing it made, you're talking about seeing it being made like in a classroom, like live demos, or are you talking about just Classrooms are important to me. I want a quilt store to have a good classroom. Do you always want to see it full and busy when you're there, or do you want to see it? Yeah, because I want to know what's going on. Like, I'm nosy. Like, I want to know what they're taking, and I want to know what they're learning. Of course, I'm teaching half the time, but I want to, I like, I like, I love the learning process. So, for me, it's all about the journey. I love the learning process. I like classrooms. I, I look at classrooms. When I go into quilt stores, I look at their classrooms. It's like, do they have design walls? Do they have this? I want to see what they've got going on. I think about that. That's probably weird. I do. I think and she hears me talk about it. <laughs> I do quite a bit. So what else? Um, so uh, the classrooms are important to me. Do yes. you want them to yell out "Welcome to Moe's" when you walk in? No. Do you care if you're greeted when you walk in? Acknowledge me, but that's all you have to do. You don't have to. I mean, if you're in the back or you're doing hey, something, how are you? what are you here for? No, nope, just, just like hi. Just Welcome. hey, how's it going? Let me know if you need anything. That's all I need. I'll ask you if I need something. Do you have any? Do you have the latest? I'm looking for. Where can I find? Yeah, I'll ask. But just let me, you just acknowledge me. Yeah, hey, how's it going? Or hey, how are you doing? Let me know if you need anything. That's all I need. What do you need? That's about it. That's about it. Sometimes I do shop like a ninja. Get in, get out. No one knows I'm there. I just leave money on the counter. Just kidding. I do actually <laughs> get <laughs> like, checked out. I've normal. never seen you shop like a ninja like that. You normally go up and pay like I do. other people. I like it when... <laughs> incognito. <laughs> incognito. With glasses, big sunglasses. Mustache. And shades. Nose. She wears shades. And I'm bumping around because I don't have sunglasses that are prescription, so that would be a great impression. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's fabric. It'll be soft when you bump into it. One, one hopes that I don't accidentally get in the rotary cutting section. <laughs> she gets shanked. <laughs> be like the movie last night. Don't even go there. Was so you're the one like, doing it. I know. I said nothing. It was still in. My, it's still in my brain. Um, what was I thinking? So, greeting, greeting, ninja, ninjas. <laughs> I've gone. No, I do have. I've so gone. when I go shopping. Um, there's a range of shopping styles. Oh, I know what I'm going to say now. And Don't. I I am the sort that, like, I know what I'm going in there for. Mm -hmm. If I spend more than 20 minutes or so looking for it, I feel completely disgusted with the capitalist society, and then I just need to drop everything and go. <laughs> <laughs> like, I am not a browser, Usually, it drives me bananas, and I... You don't browse, like, at the grocery store or anything? The fabric store? I got a low tolerance. I got I got wow. a list. And, That's yeah, not... I... Ugh, no. I got stuff to do. When we go to and shop at, like, a big market or a big quilt show or whatever, she'll be three booths ahead of me, and I'll well, still Well, because I don't get bogged down by making friendly eye contact with everybody. I'm like, nope. <laughs> You time for that. <laughs> People talk to me, and I talk back. So that's how that... So when you meet us live and in person, I'll say hi. <laughs> I won't make eye contact. <laughs> and then I'll go, this is fam, and make her talk to you. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I was going to say... <laughs> yes. 
Dang it, I forgot again. <laughs> it's going great. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> really? If I keep you laughing long enough, you're going to forget a third time. Let's do it, guys. We're going in. Here comes the giggles. No. <laughs> here comes. It's happening. It's right here. It's all happening. <laughs> I would be over by now if you didn't quit doing that. I know. That's why I'm still doing it. <laughs> People love it when we do this. <laughs> or when I do this to you. I like it when you're at a shop and they're closed technically. But you're there for a meeting or whatever that's before the shop opens or after the shop's closed or whatever. Or you and know you the get, owner. Or you know the owner. <laughs> and you get private shopping. I like private shopping. Would you ever hire a uh, a private shopper? Or, you know, because they have that, like, upscale department stores. No, but I would love to be one. Like, honestly, that is one of my very favorite things to do. If I'm teaching at... The quilt store that I teach at, and like I teach a beginner's class, and I teach a day class, and then I have a big like two or three hour break, and then I teach the night class. And I usually bring stuff to quilt or work on in this in the classroom in between that time, so it's kind of just me by myself. But if people come in and and I think the shop knows this now. If people come in and they're like, I don't know what to pick out, I go help them. I don't get paid for it. I don't care. I love helping people pick out fabric that goes together and will make a cool quilt. I love that. It's one of my favorite things to do. And people are like, they're so intimidated. That would be like my secret favorite job. Like a shopper of quilt fabrics. <laughs> A custom bundler. A custom bundler. I am going to help them bundle some stuff at the store. They will have Lynn bundles. Living the dream. Living the dream. <laughs> but I do. I like doing that. Uh, I secretly go and rearrange everything by color. No. And that needs to be sorted out. <laughs> no. Like one of the first things I do when I walk in the store, if they've got new fabric in, they usually have fat quarters set up. And I'll pick up two or three of them, and then I'll go around the store and find two or three more that go together and go, this looks good, and just hand it to them. I think the shop people are like, why does she do this? I don't know. <laughs> the owner's like, okay, we should bundle that. <laughs> She's a friend. She's a good friend. So, but yeah, I love that. That's one of my very favorite things to do, which is really alternate color stuff. And also shopping without having to pay money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, I think I think one of the challenging things for me, like this is my secret challenge, is probably why I do this, is if a new collection comes in, it all looks good together. And my thought is always, how does that look good with other things? And then I want to take part of it and add it to other things to get mm -hmm. a different looking quilt, a different looking whatever item you're doing. Purse, table runner, mug rug, all the goodness. All of the goodness. <laughs> so, are you in good company with your local quilt shop? What's your favorite thing about it? Let us know. You can leave a comment on our blog, on the YouTube episode, or in our Facebook group, What's Up Stitches. And that's all we have for this episode. Today's show is made possible by QT Fabrics. You can learn more about their fun fabrics at qtfabrics.com. We'd like to thank 77 Peaches and Big Think Productions for help producing this stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. And press the, the bell. bell. The bell will remind you when we post a video. So be sure and press the bell. Or schedule a live event, which is another thing we've gotten questions about. Of how do we know when one's coming up? Use the bell on YouTube. So speaking of, our next virtual stitch in is Friday, August 10th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern. Broadcast live on our YouTube channel. We may need cake on that one, too. Just saying. I had 24 hours of cake. I finally had to break down and have a salad last night. <laughs> Well, my children had days, cake for breakfast it's today. Two days before my anniversary. Does that count? If you want to have cake. We could have cake. All right. Our next book club. <laughs> our next book club is July 27th. And my podcast, Hip to Be a Square, is out on Friday, sometimes Saturdays, on iTunes or Google Play. All these details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com, along with links to purchase the Stitch TV show merchandise. Tune in next time for more Quilting Chat with Friends.